What's happening YouTube? Owen here from Dark Entertainment, the place to hear tales from Wales and afar. If you're into creepy stories donated to us by people like yourselves, then feel free to like and subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Now, let's get into the video. Ladies and gentlemen, my apologies for the delay in bringing you the next video. It has been shameful of me to keep my adoring fans waiting for so long for my under par content. There have been a few updates which have contributed to my delayed return. Number one is that I actually proposed to my girlfriend, and by some miracle she said yes. I did spring it on her first thing in the morning, before she had time to wake up and think about it. That's probably a factor in her answer. Second, I applied for a new job that required a considerable amount of time and effort to get through. As you can imagine, my anxiety levels for these two things really set me off. Then Christmas came and went, then I had pneumonia. And through all of this, my laptop has been on death's door because it was built around the same time as the history section of some of my videos. I know that I'd said that I'd be completing the final video on the Broadhaven incident next. But with everything going on, I still haven't finished my research. Hopefully soon. But enough about me. Let's get into the video. The Missing Legion This story is set a little further away from Wales, but is one of my favourite stories of all time. Mainly because of the history and the subsequent findings following on from the encounter. Our story is set in York. York is a town steeped in history. It's one of my favourite places in Britain. It has been colonised by many different people throughout the centuries. The Vikings sacked it and settled there. The Normans and Saxons battled over it. The Tudors committed horrible acts of brutality there, and the Romans held it as a strategic stronghold. Remnants of the Roman Empire are clearly visible today. There's a lot of dark history in York, and it truly shows the dark side of humanity, especially due to religion. In the 12th century, following the Norman conquest, a French Jewish community followed the Normans to Britain. Disagreements in religion eventually boiled over, resulting in the local population becoming hostile towards the settlers. The people of York rounded up the Jews and funneled them into Clifford's Tower. There, at the base of the wooden structure, they set fire to it. Five hundred men, women and children lost their lives. I don't know about you, but it sounds awfully familiar to a period of history many, many years later. Not long after that, the tower was rebuilt in stone. Several hundred years later, once again, during a time of religious and political struggle, a local woman named Margaret Clitheroe was arrested. Margaret was born in 1556 to a Roman Catholic family during the tumultuous reign of Mary I, also known as Bloody Mary. Mary sought to undo the great changes that her father the infamous Henry VIII had implemented and had been advanced by her younger half-brother Edward. Roman Catholics were now in power and sought to reverse the Protestant Reformation. However, this would not last long. Mary died of natural causes with no heirs. The crown then fell to her younger Protestant sister Elizabeth I. Once again, religious reform did a U-turn 
and the Catholics were once again prosecuted. At this time, Catholics were not allowed to worship Mass and had to hide priests in their house in priest holes in order to worship in peace. Margaret was caught. She was tortured in the most brutal way possible. They tied her to a scaffold, naked, with a large stone in the bottom of her back placed between the vertebrae in her spine. Then she had a board placed on top of her and weights were added to the board. This would cause the stone at the base of her spine to break her back in an effort to get her to release the names of the priest. When she did not, they moved the stone to the next vertebrae up and repeated the whole process, all whilst her children watched. She never gave up the name of the priest and died under that board. She's considered a martyr in the Catholic Church. Her house is still there today. York is also the birthplace of the infamous Guy Fawkes, who attempted to destroy Parliament in the gunpowder plot. It's also the place where Dick Turpin, the infamous highway bandit, operated. But on to our main story. In the 1950s, a young man was employed to conduct some plumbing work in the treasurer's house, just around the corner from the York Minster. He was in the cellar hammering at the brickwork when he heard the sound of a trumpet. Thinking it was something up at street level, he proceeded with his work. That was until a horse's head emerged from the brickwork. In terror, the young man clambered into the corner of the room. He watched in horror as the horse padded through the wall and into the room. As he watched, he noticed on top of the horse was a rider. The rider looked exhausted and dirty, but Harry knew he was Roman. The horse trotted through the opposite wall, and as Harry cowered in fear, an entire army walked through one wall and out the other. Once he was sure that they'd gone, he ran for it, vowing never to come back. He decided not to talk about the incident after receiving ridicule from close friends whom he told afterwards. The years rolled by, and Harry had now become a police officer. Before he left for work one day, he noticed a small article in the local newspaper which froze him in his tracks. Two people had seen the same group of soldiers in the very same cellar that he'd been working in all those years before. He decided to come forth with his story. He described the soldiers as wearing green military uniforms, not the standard red of the Roman military. They wore short swords on their right hip. This was met with laughter since the view at that time was that all soldiers were trained to be right-handed and therefore wouldn't be able to draw the sword in that position. He said that they had round shields, not the standard curved rectangular shields, and most strange of all, they were cut off at the knees. Instantly, this description was met with scepticism, since it didn't fit with the image of Roman soldiers at that time. Once again, Harry didn't tell his story. Several more years went by when several startling discoveries were uncovered. During work in the cellar, an old Roman road was excavated, 18 inches down, the same length as a human shin. The soldiers that Harry saw were walking on the old Roman road. A short distance away, underneath the minster, remains of an old Roman basilica were uncovered. Within the walls of the basilica, Roman soldiers were found wearing short swords on their right hip and round shields. Then at Hadrian's Wall in the north of England on the Scottish border, 
the remains of Roman soldiers wearing green were uncovered. It looks like Harry Martindale was telling the truth. An incredible story as you'll agree, and I recommend visiting York if you like history and ghostly occurrences. As for me, I'll see you in the next video. Ta-ta!